take ownership of everything everything in your life no matter what's happening to you find some level of ownership with that mm -hmm. when you feel like you're more in control then you can actually start to steer things a little bit better hello everyone and welcome to the wellness dojo podcast where we provide real solutions to real health and wellness problems in today's episode we are exploring the seven deadly sins and how they apply to health and wellness in the 21st century i've got my list kyle's got his list there's some wonderful and interesting takeaways from this episode let's go all right we're here again this time we're back we're back dr riley the naturopathic ninja and myself kyle creek howdy how you doing I'm good. I'm excited for another episode. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm also good. I'm also excited. It's always refreshing to be back like just the two of us every once in a while in studio. We love having our guests, but it's always fun to just kind of sit back and chill you and me and just talk about some good health and wellness topics. Kick it old school. Kicking it old school. As they say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm excited. And we're going to start with a game today, right? Oh, right off the bat. Yeah. Right out of the gate. Let's, okay. We get back to old classic episode early episodes of the wellness dojo where we were just messing around and having some fun and um that's what we want to do again today yeah okay i love it so what are we starting with here today we're okay we're gonna we're gonna play a game called 60 seconds where we we each have a secret topic to ask the other person it only works if the other person doesn't know what's coming hmm. um we pick a topic that we're pretty sure the other person doesn't know anything about then we ask them to uh, explain it to us for 60 painful seconds <laughs> right. <And then> <laughs> Should be good. The last time we did this game, it was um, it was quite hilarious. <laughs> it was over the top. It was a little over the yeah. top. Yeah. So we'll yeah. see if we if it's even possible to top it. <laughs> it um, <laughs> uh, do you want to go first? Like, do I want to be the one talking first? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm up. I'm up for it. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So your topic for sixty seconds, you have to tell the viewers and the listeners about how wi-fi works <laughs> no how, how does wi-fi no. actually work i, I don't know <laughs> oh okay all right so you've got a timer there yeah i've got a timer all right three two two one, one go. go okay so we're talking about wi-fi well i have to look a little bit into the word there it's wi-fi so you got to get to the why first yeah before you get to the phi <laughs> So it's like determining your why in anything, really, for, mm. for you know your own personal health, for your job. So with Wi-Fi, you have to figure out, well, why? And then the Fi comes later. And where does the Fi come from? Is it from the Fi-Fi Fofum variety? Or as I've heard, I think it actually stands for something like fidelity. Um, so how does Wi-Fi work? Well, you need a router with bunny ears, and you can't tell me otherwise. Uh, it's not going to work if it doesn't have bunny ears. Uh, I don't care what you tell me. You need that. You need um, air, because um, things tr travels through the air. And then you need a computer on your end. And so I think in between is fairy dust and magic, and bada boom, <laughs> you have Wi-Fi. And time. Time. <laughs> wow, I'm, I learned so much during that description of Wi-Fi. <laughs> And always important to getting to the why before the phi. <laughs> yeah, I really kind of like skirted my way around that one, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, that was, it was good. Okay. Good. All right, what do I got? What do you got? I had a couple in mind. Um, I, want, I want you to tell me about the science and uh, health benefits of yodeling, please. <laughs> yodeling. Yeah. Uh, and you, your time starts in three, two, one, bazinga. All right. So yodeling, I mean, I mean, the first and the most important thing before anybody decides to attempt yodeling is lubrication of the throat is just so important. <laughs> so like whether that's water or just gurgling some healthy oils, whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and that can actually be quite the health benefit in itself is mm -hmm. just getting those oils into mm -hmm. you, those healthy fatty acids, and just making sure that the throat <laughs> in particular is extra lubricated. Now, from there, I mean, we talk about the brain-gut connection quite a bit mm -hmm. on these episodes and, you know, the, the voice-brain connection. I mean, it's just so freeing for the spirit. And when you just, you know, when you just let those yodels out, 
when you just the practice of just freeing yourself and freeing your voice in that way it's just really really important for your brain and just just to let go and not care what anybody thinks and just just yodel away and time <laughs> Woo! wow i didn't know where that was going i was like he knows i said yodeling right he's talking about <laughs> lubricating throat lubrication is important for all voice anything yeah yeah you care to give us a little demo off off mic it might be a little loud let me give let me give one first yodelay. Yodelay, yodelay. right on yeah how'd it feel uh it felt pretty good very good. very freeing good I, I feel like my voice could have been a little bit more lubricated mm -hmm. yeah yeah but, that's but, the problem you gotta yeah. have that coffee next to you um i have a knock knock joke for you real quick before we get into oh, today's goodness. episode you are a father of three this is gonna be good yeah. uh knock knock who's there a little old lady a little old lady. <laughs> nice yodeling. Ooh. Good job. Oh, well done. I caught don't myself at the here. very end there. I was like, <laughs> here we go. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. Well, Dr. Riley, we've had some fun. Let's uh, let's keep the fun rolling, but let's talk about uh, today's topic. Okay. This was, um, yeah, this was, this is a cool one that we're talking about today. So what we're doing is we're taking the concept of the seven deadly sins. Everyone knows the seven deadly sins. I mean, Brad Pitt was in that movie, Seven, right? If you gotta got to refer to anything, refer to that. Now, so, <laughs> so what's going on with these is that um, they were really outlined as patterns in, in human behavior and human actions that lead to negative consequences, essentially. That's how, that's how I saw them. When I was a child, I never took them very seriously because I would just look at something like gluttony and go, well, you can't die from that. I guess you could like overeat, but you're not going to die from it. Oh, you mm. don't die from anger. These th these are silly. But now as an adult, having reevaluated some of these, I realize what the term deadly means. It's it's a slow, tortuous type <laughs> of inner death Oof. if you're just angry and resentful and mm -hmm. envious all the time, right? So yeah. we know what that feels like now as as adults, and we see the value in, in, in trying to stay away from these sins and then subsequently trying to instill these virtues into mm -hmm. our lives. There's these antithetical virtues to the sins as well. So what we're doing today is we're taking the concept of these seven deadly sins, we're updating it to what it looks like in the 21st century, and then specifying it to how health and wellness applies yeah. to, to these concepts. Yeah, and I think it's interesting that you know, this is this, these seven deadly sins, it comes from Christianity, right? Like at its, at its base. But as you mentioned, it, it's more about it, it, it. There's more to it than just like these things will, you know, life or death or going to hell or not, like whatever mm -hmm. you believe in at the end of the day, these, these seven deadly sins really matter most about just like who you become and how you thrive through your life. Exactly. And your quality of life. Yeah. Yeah. And you probably won't be able to stay away from all of these. I, I think the reason why they are outlined is because to be human is to fall trap yeah. to these seven deadly sins. Yeah, it's absolutely. so easy to do it. We're almost programmed towards it. I don't know if I've mentioned this uh, previously, but I, I came across that study again. It was maybe six years ago, something like that, where they looked at thought patterns and brain patterns. I believe they had people hooked up to functional MRIs and it was 85% of our thoughts are negative and 90% of our thoughts are repetitive. So it's this negative repetitive type of thinking. Yeah. That's So we're primed for that. So we have to be aware of these traps yeah. so we can identify it and then get out of them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's all about self growth when I look at these things, like as mm -hmm. we were kind of doing our preparation for this episode and stuff, like that's the thing that kept coming up in my mind too, is, uh, you know, it's not necessarily about avoiding these sins, but it's about when these things, like you said, like the, it's inevitable, almost they're going to pop up in your life and yeah. there's going to be temptations and stuff. Um, whether we're talking about actual, like the seven deadly sins or whether we, we're talking more in the health and wellness realm, yeah. these things are going to pop up. They're going to be there. And it's a matter of when we come face to face with some of these things in our life, how do we actually grow from it? How do we respond in those situations as well? Yes. How do we grow? How do we grow? Yeah. Uh, I had a cousin that would call it AF, AFGO and she would say it's AFGO and it's like another effing growth opportunity. <laughs> I love it. And so she, that was kind of her mantra would just be like, something would happen. It would just be like AFGO. 
yeah another up and grow opportunity and it's true because these things are they're going to come in, uh, inevitably and you're going to be faced with them and it's just about the tools you have in place and the moves you have to deal with them and sidestep yeah. them and yeah and, and not get caught up in them for too long yeah and, and to accept them too right because you know sometimes certain things are going to take over you a little bit more than others and you're not going to like it but to just accept it and uh, I think when you can accept some of these things, then that's when growth can happen is you just accept that, okay, this, this happened, or this is the way that it is. How do I move forwards from this and be better? Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So our challenge to each other, what, how this is going to go is that I took the classic seven deadly sins and tried to come up with examples, sometimes even specific situations that I see today in 21st century health and wellness and try to populate examples into the seven deadly sins. And then what Kyle did was more create his own yeah. for, for what he believes are the seven deadly sins in health and wellness today and a little bit more free form. So we've yeah. got those two combined. We got a lot of material to, to to talk about. We don't have to get through it all. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll just see where where we're where we're at. Yeah. Um, and how it's going. So I think it'll be fun. It will be. Are right, you wanna dive into the first deadly sin? Yeah, because I've got a bit of an interesting example, okay. I, I think too. Yeah, and okay. So and Kyle hasn't heard these yet either. So okay, so the first one is pride, but there's another name for it that I really loved, and that's vainglory. Mm -hmm. And I just really loved that old timey um, concept. And it's vain, V A I N. You would, you know, you would be remiss to think yeah. it's V E I N, <laughs> but it's okay yeah. because the example I'm going to give, uh, there is some overlap. So, um, what does vainglory mean? And I, I loved the definition too. It was like undue pomp, like undue <laughs> pompousness. Like it's like, it's this type of worthless boasting. Mm hmm. Right. Or worthless pride that you didn't work for. Yeah. And so there's a lot of examples in this. But so I'm, I'm going to go more on the, on the vain glory side, uh, undue pompousness. And and what I've seen, have you seen synthol injecting uh, oil into your muscles to make them bigger? Yes. Yeah. So that would be a perfect example of almost like this worthless, you're trying to convey a certain message about I've worked for this, I am a monster, I am strong, I am this, I am that, yeah. but you put no work into it and you just injected a dangerous oil and alcohol and lidocaine substance into your muscles. Yeah. And it is literally deadly. Um, it can cause your, your muscles to almost like turn to rock and you, you have to amputate your arms if it gets bad enough. And so that's just one example of vein, V-A-I-N and V-E-I-N to yeah. a certain extent. <laughs> and so the stuff that they, uh, the, this it's, it's a bodybuilding craze that uh, I believe they mostly see affecting young men, of course. And it becomes addictive because then you look at yourself in the mirror and that becomes your standard. And mm -hmm. you go, well, I have these huge muscles and these, and I'm, I'm the monster I always wanted to become. And then anytime you deflate down from that baseline, you start to feel bad about yourself. And so it becomes like an addictive drug. Yeah. And so that's just one example. But these things are, are out there. Yeah. In, in health and wellness, especially when it comes to uh, your appearance, your physical appearance yeah. and things like that. So that would be my, my caution is just that anytime, you know, there's something that's a shortcut to the degree that it's, it's going to harm you, just be careful because it might not be one time it can get addictive. Yeah. And then you're going to be in a rut that you're going to have to climb out of. Yeah. You can really see how that can be even in the, an emotional sense too of you see yourself in a certain light of whatever you're doing in life, whether that's in a relationship, in a career path or whatever the case might be. And if that then becomes your standard and nothing below it is worthy, then that becomes a really dangerous cycle, right? Of, you know, not liking yourself unless you're where you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So beware vain glory. Beware. And the oil, it's uh, MCT oil, the yeah. medium chain triglycerides that tends to come from coconut or, or palm leaves. And so it can actually be injected, like your bloodstream absorbs MCT oil. Mm -hmm. So it's safe enough, but then there's alcohol in the solution so that you don't get a bacterial infection. So mm -hmm. you're also injecting alcohol. And then the lidocaine is um, 
just something it's like an analgesic so that you don't feel the pain of the injection going in yeah but yeah yeah so that's the length that people are willing to go and it's it's scary it's scary and you know i definitely have empathy for those people too it's sad it is yeah and there's huge consequences i i I had to just dive into a little they've got little documentaries online i just dove into a little five minute one where they're yeah i think they were concentrating on people in um south america bodybuilders that got totally hooked to it and it's just physical image right and it makes you yeah. feel worse than when you started yeah so crazy yeah yeah so there's my example of vain glory in the 21st century i love it and yeah an example that i can give as well and you can tell me if you agree with this being you know in line with that but we see in martial arts a lot of the times too with you know whether if somebody's been winning or something like that first of all that i think a good example of that too is being a poor winner Right. We see that sometimes people who are gloating and those types of things or people who are, you know, if they don't win and there's no way it could be because, you know, they weren't their best that day. But it's because the judge didn't score this point for me or whatever the case might be. Like you blame the judges or you blame your coach or whatever the case might be. You blame other people. Mm -hmm. I think that that could maybe be a good example as well. Right. Of just that you know set it, putting yourself at the standard and not being able to accept that you dropped below that standard too or just not being gracious in victory yeah. and defeat yeah. yeah yeah all right do you want to take a turn here sure yep so um so my number one that i chose for uh, health and wellness was disdain or being unworthy so when people are, you know, whether they're trying to start something or start a new wellness path, they just don't feel like they're, they're worthy of that. That might look like a busy mom or dad who just doesn't feel like they, uh, they feel like they need to do everything for everybody else, but, and they should be last, right? Mm-hmm. We think like, oh, I should be, I, I need to give everything to everybody else. And then if there's time at the end, then I'll take care of myself. That feeling of like, I'm not worthy to, you know, invest that that money, that financial investment into a personal trainer or a new fitness class or a gym membership, or I'm not, you know, that, that time shouldn't be spent on me because I need to work or I need to do this or that. Mm-hmm. I, think, um, I think that can be really dangerous. Yeah, and I, I would imagine that it would create envy. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, speaking of them sins there. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe it would create envy because when I was looking into the concept of envy, it seemed like it swam very closely with some form of, um, let's say, self-disappointment mm-hmm. or even self-depreciation. Uh, that, was, that was something that was mentioned out there is that you become envious because you're actually disappointed in yourself. And so if you're always neglecting, neglecting, but you want something deep down, you're going to be looking at other people that have it and you're going to go, they've got it easy. Yeah. They don't have the same situation. That person also has it easy. And then you would, uh, you would mention to me at some, you know, this concept of like ownership, yeah. taking ownership of, of things, right? Can you speak to that a little bit? Too? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was another one of the kind of sins that I put down here was uh, was blame, right? As another deadly sin towards health and wellness is blame. Like when you're blaming other people and you're, you know, like you mentioned, like being envious of other people, but but rather, or blaming the world, right? And saying like, yeah, the, the one thing we were talking about beforehand was, you know, these everybody knows these people or maybe you maybe you are one of these people and drama just seems to follow you like problems just always seem to follow you or or these people are always posting on social media about what's happened to them and like how things are working against them followed by hashtag can't stand drama yeah (laughs) right but and you know my belief is that in these situations, in almost every case, and I say almost every case, but really, I, I, I think I do believe in like, in every case, the drama is not following this person, but rather it's more like they're leading it on a leash, hmm. right? And maybe it's pulling them in certain directions. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like you have to take ownership of that leash. You have to understand that whether you're behind the leash or whether something's pushing you, like you have to take ownership of that. Mm -hmm. And a a good example that I actually gave to a client recently was when, you know, if somebody was standing there in front of you and just smacking you in the face, 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 are you going to just stand there and wait for that thing 
to stop smacking you in the face? Or are you going to, you know, try and step backwards or step to the side or maneuver in some way where things stop smacking you? Like you have to, at the end of the day, take a level, a level of ownership to everything that's going on. And I think when you do start to take that ownership, it really does take the power away or the perceived power away mm -hmm. from these external forces that appear to be working against you. Yeah, you'd have to be quite the masochist to just stand there and keep getting smacked. Yeah. Maybe one out but, of a million people. Yeah, but <laughs> but but I mean, so many people do, right? Because mm -hmm. they just don't believe that they have any other options. They believe that they're in a corner and maybe they are in a corner, but you know, you have to find a way out. And that's something that I work on actually with my martial arts students is we work on, you know, from a fighting standpoint of like, what do you do when you're cornered? Like eventually you have to find a way out. But I always relate it back to life in the sense that, you know, this is training for real life situations because in life you're going to feel like you're put in a corner a lot of times and like there's nowhere left to go and that you're just, you're just meant to just keep taking the shots, but you're not. Like you can always find a way out. You might take a couple shots on the way out, but you can still get out. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about, you know, these topics of like envy and um, maybe resentment that gets born because you're not putting yourself first and things like that. But there's always a corresponding virtue to these things too. And for envy, it's actually gratitude, yeah. which is such a great virtue to try to practice and, yeah. uh, and instill in yourself. Um, because when you're grateful for what you have, it can really be, it can be so very relieving i mean truly it's it's yeah. like a superpower it's a magical thing in life envy and gratitude are both very powerful drugs right and like they can both be very um addictive in a sense but one of them is much healthier for you right? yeah like when you look at gratitude like gratitude has the power to really pull you out of some really tough situations and some really difficult cycles too right mm -hmm. the downward spirals that people feel like gratitude is really really a powerful tool and a really simple tool to lean on yeah. i say simple but like it's not easy but it's simple it, in the sense that it's always right there for you yeah and it can be simple that's something that i've learned recently about gratitude is that you don't have to sit there and think of what's the thing i should be most grateful for yeah when I was read, you know, I read about uh, other perspectives on gratitude quite a lot, and there was one psychologist, and and they were saying that don't don't worry too much about being grateful for the perfect thing. Just think about something simple. The example they used is, I'm grateful for my big toe because it doesn't hurt me right now, and it helps me walk and get yeah. around. Yeah. And just something just so just so simple like that I thought was great yeah. because you don't have to think too hard about it. It's not being grateful for the right precise things. It's just the exercise in and of itself that yeah. has the benefits. Yeah. A great easy exercise that people can use for gratitude is to picture almost like a, a circle within a circle, within a circle, almost like a, like a target. And if you start on the outside of the circle, these are like the simplest things that you can be grateful. These are like the low hanging fruits of gratitude. So, you know, these are the things that's like, I'm grateful for my wife. I'm grateful for my kids. I'm grateful for my big toe. I'm grateful for having food that I can eat. I'm grateful for clean water, right. like really simple thing, things yeah. that are easy to grasp mm -hmm, at. Mm -hmm. And then you can work your way in the circle and, you know, you can look at even playing off of some of those other things. Okay. I'm grateful for my kids because my kids make me smile. I'm grateful for my wife because she supports me in all my ventures. I'm grateful for this because this. Okay. you can so kind you of add another layer there. Yeah. You almost like have layers of gratitude and that can be a simple tool for people to just get started with that gratitude. I like it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hit me with another one here. All right. Another one that I had on here was self doubt as one of the seven deadly sins of health and wellness, uh, that self doubt. I mean, all of these things are going to really kind of play into yep. each other quite a bit, but self doubt is a big one because so many people don't start because they just don't believe that they are going to be able to do it. You yeah. Know? And that, that plays into some of these other, other ones too. But when we look at that, like how many people have you worked with where you're like, you know, why haven't you started? Or, or you, maybe they're asking themselves that question. It, it does. It, it always seems to circle back in some sense to doubting their abilities or doubting because they've tried before and it, and it wasn't successful, whatever the case might be. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, 
you have to go to well what's what's underneath this the doubt there's a fear that i'm going to xyz i'm gonna yeah. embarrass myself and so where i take people to is like go okay let's let's just go there in your mind because the mind's going there anyways yeah let's unpack it a little bit and say so so you know let's talk about what it would feel like if you're embarrassed and you know use some synonyms for what that would feel like and then you know the hope is that you almost write this like fear or worry script mm -hmm. and realize that it's 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 not going to be as bad as you think it's going to be because you put a little bit of a probability to it yeah. okay sure so this is the worst case scenario what's the likelihood of it happening yeah. zero one percent less okay sure any even if it did happen would it be the end of your life would it actually tarnish your reputation if you tried to run across a field and you tripped over your shoelaces during a boot camp class and you thought that yeah. was the end of the world yeah. it's like no you're gonna you're, you're gonna be lifted up by people they're gonna ask it are you okay and they're gonna say you can do it here i'll run with you this yeah. time like it so you have to so where's the fear coming from you know and and the self-doubt and get to that deeper emotion and then instead of just saying okay well that's where it comes from it comes from embarrassment and you go no you almost like right yeah. okay let's go through a script of if this happens and what yeah. the real world consequences are and what the probability is that's what i do with people yeah and speaking of probability like i would say probably like 90 percent of the time we're fearful of things that either have never happened or will never happen to us right like we're always yeah. afraid of these things that are like imaginative mm. things that we're fearing mm -hmm. and like it really like 90% of the time, these things never actually occur. No, we just fear the possibility of it occurring. Yeah. And so the virtue that I had for looking at self doubt, and even, you know, another, another one of my seven deadly sins was was fear, right? Mm. Or avoidance. Um, but when we look at self doubt, like assurance, Right. And whether that's self-assurance or whether that's getting assurance from somebody else, like a coach or a mentor or counselor or anything like that. Right. That assurance. Maybe that might be telling yourself like, no, you can do this. Right. Very simple. Like just, you know, even if you don't believe it yet, just that, that reassurance of, no, I, I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> right. Or somebody else telling you, you can do this, which is maybe a more, you know, popular um, concept to a lot of people. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then the other form of assurance that I would really l tell people to lean on as a virtue in their life is like remembering times when you've been afraid of this, something similar before mm -hmm. and how that worked out. Yeah. Remember that last time I tried to start something new, I was afraid too. How did that work out when I, when I took that chance? Right. And almost every time you think about that, you're going to realize that one, you're still here today. So you survived it. And two, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, even if it didn't go my way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I laughed there when you said self-assurance just because I still do that. Yeah. I'll do like if I if I have a few appointments that day and some are new patients and things like that, even though I've been doing this for years now, my mind still goes, oh, I don't know. Can you do this? Can you heal this person? I don't even know what they're coming in for yet, but my yeah. mind's already doing that. And I'll literally be in the shower and be like, you can do this. You are who you say you are. You yeah. have the education. You do care. Like I have to, like that might never go away. Yeah. That that's how I have to counteract that voice. So I just had to laugh because I'm like, yeah. I, I do that. That's kind of what like, we talked about at the beginning too, right? These things are going to pop up in your life. Like these, you know, deadly sins or whatever, they're going to pop up in your life. It's a matter of how do we approach them? And the more we can practice the virtues that we're outlining, the better chance you're going to give yourself to grow from some of these things that approach us or mm -hmm. that we approach. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right, let's move on to another one. Yeah. This one's, I don't know, I think it's an interesting topic. I was almost going to say it's fun. It's not fun if you're really stuck in it, but yeah. gluttony, it's mm. going to be an interesting one to talk about. Yeah. So that, as it relates to today, is quite different from perhaps how it related in the past. In the past, mm. there was a strong association with gluttony and drunkenness, yeah. I believe was a big part of it. Yep. And nowadays, we have so many ways to just burn and fizzle up our neurochemicals, particularly mm -hmm. our dopamine, which is our motivation chemical, vitamin M. We're just burning it up constantly, doing things that leave us feeling worse yep. than when we started that activity. Yep. So that's news and politics, that's you know, most of the intense types of video games, that's certain types of TV shows and, and movies and things like, you know, TV shows, even if the episode seems benign enough, you know, I'm just watching a baking show, I'm just watching a farming show, it's the, the creators, cr they, they make drama, yeah. they, they get your nervous system all worked up, they end it without closure so you can get to the next episode, like you're being manipulated, yeah. even if it seems like a some innocuous type of TV show. Yeah. So just be aware of that stuff. So for me, 
uh, gluttony these days is anything that burns up your precious vitamin M, your motivation vitamin, dopamine. It's not a vitamin. I'm just saying that. But <laughs> it, anything that burns it up and leaves you feeling worse than when you started. Yeah. And there's a lot of examples that I know I can engage in throughout the day. And I have blocks on my phone. I have... Uh, blocks installed on my computer so I can't even go to news sites from mm. this hour to this hour because they've got me. They they know how to manipulate my dopamine and, yeah. you know, and that's, you know, I'm up against a lot as we all are. So um, for myself, yeah, it, it's pretty much, um, that's gluttony. And then the, the virtue that goes along with it is just, you know, temperance, I guess you could say, yeah. right, which is, is difficult and it requires strategies. Yeah. yeah. So how would you look at that in the sense of like when we're looking at, let's just call it social media and just the internet and the how negativity is so loud and, and how it is manipulative, mm -hmm. how would you suggest that people go about, you know, trying to, to counter that in a realistic way? Yeah, I would say that for all of the negativity, there can also be positivity. Ma try to have this mindset. Make social media work for you mm -hmm. instead of you working for it you getting caught up in it and manipulated try to if you're going to follow pages make it pages that are positive if you're going to yep. follow people make sure it's family and friends who you actually appreciate and you want to keep up with and yep. you appreciate their updates and their posts and then if it's apps on your phone make sure it's apps that are supporting like i've got a mindfulness app on, on my phone now make sure it's apps that are supporting productivity mindfulness positivity things like that yeah um you know if if news isn't your thing i've got like a, a funny kind of jokes app on there now but even that it's starting to get a little bit political yes. most of the jokes and things so i might have to delete that but try to make your phone and social media work for you yeah. as much as possible instead of the other way yeah and for a lot of people like really be careful with what you're engaging on in social media because a lot of the algorithms are very based on like your engagement you'll notice this if you're scrolling through social media even if you stop and something catches your eye more you're like the next thing that pops up on your feed is more likely to be something that was either from that person or that that platform mm -hmm. um that company or something similar because the elder the algorithms are just so smart now. Yeah. Right. So when you see that post, that political post that kind of like irks you a little bit, like take a moment and think about, do I engage in this post? Because if you do, you're much more likely to then have those things pop back up again. And it's just going to keep triggering you, keep triggering you learn to step away, learn to just let things slide by, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That's, yeah. that'd be my kind of specific advice for people. If social media is one of those things that you know, is just affecting you negatively. Like you said, like unfollow certain things that you know are making you not feel good. Even if it's a person and even if that person's not a bad person, but for whatever reason for you, it, that, that person is not making you feel good. Like for example, if somebody's like following me on social media and for whatever reason, let's say I'm like showing off some success that I had or something that doesn't make them feel good. Like my advice would be like, well, then don't follow me for now. Right. Like, or whoever that person might be, like, if it's not making you feel good, you don't need to feel guilty about it. Just avoid it for now. Or like, mm -hmm. you don't put something else in its place that does make you feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Because we need to counteract the 85% negative thoughts and repetitive thoughts. Yeah. So negativity is louder but positivity is all over the place mm -hmm. like really like yep. everywhere you look there is so much good in this world we're just not it's just not as loud on a lot of these platforms the the media uh the socials like it's just not as loud yeah. but it's there absolutely if you look for it and if you if you lock it in it is there yeah and it will change you awesome yeah all right i'm gonna take one more here okay let's all do right it. so uh there's another one and it's known as wrath and mm -hmm. anger and wrath go together yeah. and when i was looking a little bit more into well what you know wrath isn't a word we use too much these days yeah speak for yourself like, no. <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's some book out there called the grapes of wrath one yeah. of the classics yeah but other than that you don't hear about it too much so i was looking into the origins of the concept and of the word as it as it applies to the topics today and um, something that, that came up was holding a grudge, mm -hmm. holding a grudge against something. So when it comes to health and wellness for myself, uh, my, my advice today is 
don't hold a grudge towards a thing or an activity that you tried once, had a bad experience, and yep. and now you've dropped it for the rest of your life. Yeah. You could have been in a bad mood that day when you went to yoga class. That instructor could have been in a bad mood that day, or they honestly maybe weren't yeah. the, the greatest instructor for you. Uh, perhaps you tried meditation at a time when you just really were not ready to receive it or write for it. Same yep. with journaling. So today I don't want to talk about holding grudges against people. We all know how poisonous that can be. But yeah. as it relates to health and wellness, don't hold a grudge towards activities you tried one time yeah. and didn't like it. If you tried it twice, cool. I yeah. can respect that. I've, I've given things a couple goes and it's just not for me and not everything has to be for you. Yeah. But be aware of holding grudges against things, especially that you know can help people. Journaling, meditation, cold showers, exercise and movement, yeah. all those things that are important but a little bit sleep hygiene you know good good practices before and um before bedtime and then when you wake even when you wake it can affect your sleep getting yeah. exposure to sunlight as soon as possible so yeah just be careful of, of of dropping things too readily and too quickly yeah and the virtue to you know wrath and anger is patience right and yeah. i would even add openness especially in terms of what you were talking about is just have a have a willingness to be open to ideas and to old things, right? Yep. Like have an openness to try that activity again, even though it didn't go well for you last time or, you know, because people change. Uh, you know, I was recently talking, we were talking about just boot camps just now, right? And even that, like you might try it one year and it wasn't for you, mm -hmm. but you know, maybe there's a different instructor now or maybe that instructor has changed the way that they, they go about things too. Yeah, Like you just don't know unless you're willing to just try, unless you're willing to be patient, wait things out, try things more than once and, and be open to, you know, trying new things and trying old things, mm -hmm. then you, you just might surprise yourself. Or maybe you were in the province of Alberta last year and were exposed to like soot and smoke in the air yeah. plus 37 degrees. And you're like, I don't like boot camp. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> try it again. Try it in the spring this year. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I know we're on a boot camp kick because boot camps are starting up here, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very important though, just to be open, just to be willing and, and, and have patience with some of these different processes that you're attempting, mm -hmm. right? Not everything's going to feel easy right away either. So having that patience there is going to be important too, because a lot of things that you try first, whether it's a diet, whether it's exercise, whether it's journaling or meditation, like you're going to feel resistance to these things early on. So that, that patience piece, I think is really important too, just even with trying something new. Yes. Yeah. Oh, patience. patience. Oh, patience. That's that's my <laughs> life's journey is working on patience. Yeah. 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 It's a tough one. It is. It is. Yeah. Patience <laughs> is difficult with, in all aspects of life, whether it's family aspects, business aspects, whatever the case might be, like patience is just so prominent in our life. And if we can, the, well, the, the more we, for it, yeah. the need for it and, and the practice of it too, right? It's just so important that you, it's something that you keep as a virtue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All yeah. right, your turn. Okay, um, another one that I had on here was comfort. Um, I think this mm. is a big one, um, you know, for I think obvious reasons, but a lot of people struggle with change because it's not comfortable. Yeah. And so comfort is something that can keep you really locked into that corner that we were talking about where, yeah, you might be getting smacked in the face, but at least I'm used to it, right? <laughs> like that's, that's very, very common, you know, yeah, this, this, uh, I'm struggling with my eating or I'm struggling to, with the way my body feels because I'm not moving it effectively or, or consistently enough, but at least I'm used to it, mm -hmm. right? At least, at least I'm used to this pain. Mm. Comfort is a, it's a tough one, right? And I can already tell this is going hand in hand with my classic uh, virtue of sloth, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, because um, my my advice for how sloth applies to health and wellness in the 21st century was with sloth. I know we're just probably all thinking about the cute creature right now. But um, <laughs> so to me, as it applies, I was really thinking that, you know, we always have like meeting your potential and things like that. But with sloth, it's like, are you even meeting your minimum? Mm -hmm. If you're not even meeting your minimum, then to me, that's something that's going to cause a slow physical and spiritual and emotional death and we all have our yeah. minimums you could be massively depressed and the only thing that you can do all day long is get up go to the bathroom and maybe make breakfast but that's your minimum 
if you stop even making breakfast, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. So we all have our minimum, no matter what your situation is. You could be somebody recovering from cancer, and the only thing you can do is slight arm exercises, whatever it is you, that you can do, right? So we all have our minimum, but if you're not meeting that, you are, you're, you're committing one of these uh, archetypal seven deadly sins, so to speak. Yeah. And so just be aware of what your minimum is. Try to hit it. And then obviously, if you're in a good enough place, start building off of that minimum. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It reminds me just something that I'll, that I often say, which is it's okay. And it's, you know, it's out there as well. I hear it everywhere, but it's okay not to be okay. Mm -hmm. But, but the latter to that is like, it's not okay to not do anything about it though. That's like, you know, in my opinion, that's what I truly believe. It's like, yeah, it's okay to be depressed. It's okay to have anxiety. It's okay to struggle. But what's not okay is to do nothing about it and to just accept it. Like when I think of the virtue to that, which is diligence, right? It's also like responsibility. Like you have a responsibility to yourself to continue to try, mm -hmm. right? And I think, I mean, you can correct me if, if you disagree with this, but I think part of that sloth is just this unwillingness to to try, right? And it, it might might not feel like an unwillingness because it might feel like something has a grip over you or, or that you just can't, but you always can, right? Mm -hmm. you, you always can, like like you said, reach that minimum or mm -hmm. shoot for that minimum yeah. even. Um, so just that willingness to try and that willingness to just, you know, take the take on that responsibility for yourself right yeah. yeah and along those lines of diligence and responsibility i believe that there's always something that you can be trying to fix that's either harming yourself or harming others in mm -hmm. your vicinity yeah and so that's to me what diligence means too you should be meeting your minimum and but at the same time be evaluating the things that are harming you yeah. and or others and when i i have this uh therapeutic order that I created. Um, the naturopathic doctors have their own. I kind of, I have my own. And at the bottom, the, the, the platform, uh, it's remove obstacles to health or remove obstacles to cure. Yeah. So if you're doing something that's actively harming yourself, it doesn't matter the treatment plan I give you, it's not going to work. So that's kind yeah. of step one, right? So yeah. that's part of diligence and responsibility for me too. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's ways to create more diligence too right like if you're struggling to do it yourself like find accountability for it mm -hmm. uh, accountability i think can be a big part of creating that diligence yeah yeah accountability get syst some systems in place yeah absolutely yep absolutely um okay so another one that i had um how are we doing for time here we're good we're good another one that i had here was um insecurity so insecurity being a big deadly sin for trying to create better health and wellness in your life, right? People who are, and what I mean by this is people who are maybe like insecure about certain things about themselves, which is then blocking them from taking that chance at something, right? I'm insecure about my body, so I'm not going to go and exercise with other people, just keeping on that boot camp course, right? Or I'm insecure about my knowledge with this. So I'm not going to go and hire a coach because I'm, uh, you know, I'm afraid that that's going to expose an insecurity that mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing. Right. Yeah. Things, things like that. Um, and, and the virtue to counter that really becomes vulnerability, mm. right? It's really is. Oh, quite, we love vulnerability on the wellness. Dojo we podcast. love vulnerability. Vulnerability is a strength for sure. Um, and yeah, it's just that, that willingness to be vulnerable, that willingness to say, yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Please help me. Yeah. Right. Because otherwise right. you're just stuck. Mm -hmm. And if you're vulnerable, uh, and being truthful through your vulnerability, well, that becomes the bar that, uh, you set for yourself for now and the expectations that other have on you. And then it becomes easier because you're vulnerable. People know where you stand and now you're not expecting the moon from yourself and others probably aren't either. And so then you build from it and then you get to impress people and then you get to surprise people. Yeah. And that's uh, you know, one of the positive aspects of being real and, and being vulnerable. You don't want to be vulnerable to the point where you're you're feigning it to get attention. Of course, yeah. that would become some sort of other <laughs> yeah. deadly sin, right? But yeah. Yeah. yeah, then you start to you start to get into more just like looking for um, oh, what's the word for it here, 
what would be the word for that? You're looking for acknowledgement and yeah, stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so we're talking about being real here, being truthful, yeah, being vulnerable because you you just can't you can't hold the weight of that armor anymore that you need yeah. to feel like you need to put on yourself. Yeah, and there's a big like there's a big difference too between being vulnerable for you and being vulnerable for everybody else. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that's maybe what what you were touching on too is like <laughs> I think it's very easy to be like too vulnerable sometimes. Like yeah, because there's a certain de- you're right, because there's a I mean the world is a nasty place and there's a certain amount of defensiveness we need to hold but it's yeah. like it's a it, you know it's like a wooden fence it's not yeah it's not concrete rebar steel and forced yeah <laughs> yeah even for your own self like if you're being vulnerable like being vulnerable i think for some people actually becomes toxic for them where they're like they're purposefully putting their vulnerabilities out because they need that acknowledgement yeah. from other people yeah and so that's i was warning about that yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah 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 we've that, seen it absolutely <clears throat> yeah you see it all over social media right that's another negative thing of social media is uh, i know sometimes i'll see somebody i'm like man they're complaining again about something like, yeah i have empathy for them yeah right on that social media but but at the same time you're like at what point do you stop complaining and what at what point are you becoming now in that sloth mm-hmm. category right where you're just like you're stuck in that place of like oh, yeah. of vulnerability and then it, it but part of that vulnerability needs to be like the, the action piece of it yeah i'm vulnerable but i need to take action on it right it's okay to Ooh. be not okay but it's not okay to not do anything about it we're tying it in here we are nice <laughs> okay i had uh, i had one more on my list that i want to get to yeah let's let's hit it today and that is that is the deadly sin of greed. Mm. Greed, greed, greed. So how do I see greed applying to health and wellness in the 21st century? Well, there's a few things that come up. One is anyone who's selling the hack. Yeah. Because greed is something that, greed, when it applies to these sins, it tends to be um, yearning for wealth and yearning for power. Mm-hmm regardless of who you trample on the way there, regardless yeah. of if what you're peddling works or not. Or attention too. Yeah. 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 Which it might be part of power. Yeah, right? Totally. Totally. And so anyone who's selling the hack, anyone who is um, like, I'm good with clickbait titles if there's substance behind it. Cause I realize you got to get clicks, but clickbait titles without any substance behind it yeah. and just empty vapid nonsense. Um, so that to me is, is quite greedy because these people have a bottom line and, and they don't have the philosophy necessarily yeah. behind it. Uh, and then something a little bit more practical that I was thinking of was the last time I was part of a gym and I, oh, I, I was part of a, a gym since then quickly, but mm-hmm. the last time I was really part of a gym, like paying monthly, actually going and things like that. Um, I realized that very quickly that these trainers that were around were actually a roaming sales force. And so I'm already paying this gym $50 a month. And then I I remember I was just doing something just, just little like a bicep curl or something. And I struggled on the 10th rep a little bit and boom, someone came up to me and said that, Hey, you know, uh, I saw you struggle in there. I I, I offered personal training and you know, I could help support you and you can get that last rep in. And I'm thinking, Oh my God, like, I can't struggle anymore without someone approaching me. Like it was my last rep. I'm supposed yeah. to struggle a little bit. And and I wanted to ask what you thought of that because before you got into this business and, you know, personal um, pri- private training and things like that, uh, I believe that you, that was one of your jobs at one yeah. point when you were younger. Yeah, it was, it was funny because, you know, I, I always wanted to run my own business, but at, at a certain point, everybody kept telling me, um, you need you need more sales experience you need to be better at sales right Try your own business and so eventually i gave in and i said okay i'm gonna go get a job at a gym um and it was solely for that purpose because i knew going into that that space i was going to be forced to sell i was that was going to be a big thing and boy was i uh was i not disappointed in a sense of you know from what i expected anyways it was very disappointing because Yep, you're you're pushed. It's like the like they had a number, in, uh, or sorry, they had a whiteboard in the back staff room that had, you know, Ooh. Kyle, Susan, like whatever the oh, names were. Oh, that just hurt me. Yeah, oh, and no. like literally, like this person has sold X amount. This mm. person sold X amount, and there was bonuses for the people who sold more and stuff. And it really, really just became left a really bad taste in my mouth, like mm-hmm. worse than I had before. Of 
like you, you know how when people tell you you have to do something mm-hmm. how you just like you instantly yeah. have this natural resistance to it yeah well i instantly had this natural resistance to like wanting to sell people and yeah you're, you're absolutely right you're told you know get out on the gym floor talk to people like and that's great like I'm happy to go talk to people. I'm happy to help people in any way that I can. But this pressure to sell, yeah. this pressure to make money, yeah. and I get it. Like, yeah, your business. As, yeah. as the patron, I, 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 after the first time that happened, I started amassing all of this ammunition for what I was going to say the next time. Like, I know it was not going to be nice. Mm-hmm. It was going to be something along the lines of. The gym is the only place that I can go where I don't have to talk to somebody. The gym is where I go to, you know, be in my own space, to, to be, uh, have that biofeedback with my body and not in my head or like listen to music. And I was going to say some jumble of that to them yeah. to get them to go away. And I, then I had my backup and I, yeah. I quit probably three or four weeks after I started yeah. realizing that they had almost one sales member per every two or three patrons at any yeah. given time yeah yeah so that's to me that's kind of greedy is when they just need more and more and more and they're just trying to milk because like there's there's always like you know 60 shades of ways to do things you can have a sign at the front that says it's the first of the month sign up for personal training and get 10 percent off and yeah. then that's it or the person mentions it as they scan your card and then that's it right there's yeah. always there's there's a variety of ways you can still sell your services yeah. but it gets into the shading where you're great. It's good for you in the bottom line. It's actually bad for your customers and for the morale in there. And for somebody wanting to start like the amount of times. And if you're listening to this, like just in your head, like do a mental check of it. And I guarantee you've experienced this before where you're, meeting with somebody to that you could potentially hire to help you whether it's a personal trainer a coach whatever the case might be but you're going into that with your guard up already already resisting the sale that's coming your way Mm -hmm. and i know from being on both sides of this but in particular from being on let's just call it the sales side of it where I genuinely want to help this person. I genuinely want this person to sign up for this service because I really feel that I can help them with it. And you instantly feel that resistance that like, oh, they're just so resistant because like they have this perception that I'm just there to sell, Mm -hmm. right? When really like, yeah, I am, but I'm there to sell something that it is like, that I genuinely believe in versus the experience that a lot of people have had where they don't feel like, this person genuinely has their best interest in mind. I think that's where greed becomes really, really um, toxic, right? It's like, to me, it's when like, you can sense that they genuinely don't have your best interest in mind. It is about the money or it is about that the attention or the power that they're getting from you engaging in this or you investing in this and whether that's your time or your money, whatever the case might be, like, yeah, it's it's a real turnoff for people and it does affect people starting like the fear of, you know, the other person's greed. Yeah. 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 Okay, let's start doing these a little bit more uh, rapid fire style. Yep. Um, the last one that I was challenged with was the last still just do my 10 second version of that. It's yep. like, just be very careful uh, when you're in health and wellness. It's it, it becomes easy to overvaluate physical appearance when, you know, looking for a partner or something like that. And uh, just make sure that you're not weighting that too heavily. Um, I don't care. I can say this now. I have enough life experience. It doesn't work out well. I've never seen it work out well. Yeah. If you're not in a, you know, incorporating some of their other values into it. Are they a nice person? Are we compatible? What do they think about X, Y, Z? How do they treat their family and how they, yeah. you know, all that stuff. So, and then be careful about allowing others to lust over you. I also don't think that works out unless, you know, if that's what you do, it's how you make money. You truly love it cool but if you feel like you're forcing it because you have to because you've been told but you actually don't like putting your body out there um just take an inventory of how uh people have the opportunity to objectify you probably through social media and then start phasing that out that's all i would say for when it comes to um lust and chastity chastity is your own version of not allowing others to objectify you anymore because that's what happens and that's what happens when you put lust and physical appearance at the top of the pedestal you start training your brain to objectify others so that's my rapid fire for lust and and yeah and i'll touch on it super quick is just like those two things i think also create this lust for self as well Right. And that's a very common thing in this industry is that people, you know, they, they need their body to look a certain way for whatever reason, whether that's 
because they fear that other people won't lust them the same way if they don't look a certain way when really like what you talked about like if you've ever like hooked up with somebody and like you like get got to know them and you didn't like like you, you just didn't have that connection or whatever then it's very easy to then like you lose attraction like you, physical attraction even with somebody you're like i just i'm not physically attracted in the same way that i was before i got to know them right and that's um it's a scary thing but but that can happen with yourself too mm. you can you can get yourself looking you know i look really good naked but when you like really strip away the skin and the appearance if you don't like who you are and the, like the actions and the choices that you're making on a deeper level then you're never going to like the person who looks back at you in the mirror right so yeah. that's a really powerful one yeah yeah okay i'm gonna go rapid fire just down my list as okay. a, almost like a review okay of what i came up with here so so for health and wellness so seven deadly sins i'm gonna list the sin and then i'll list the countering virtue as well just Perfect. as a recap for everybody okay so number one disdain or feeling unworthy of self um self-respect would be the virtue so practice self-respect like pump yourself up like honor yourself celebrate yourself those mm -hmm. types of things uh next one is self-doubt and i put assurance as that or whether that's reassurance or or new assurances of just like i got this i can do this i am strong daily affirmations and remembering previous times you did succeed and remembering and bringing that into the present absolutely. i love that yeah absolutely um and then number three avoidance so the uh, you know whether that's fear of failure or whatever the case might be you're avoiding things for a certain reason and the virtue for that is desire so just like really like remind yourself why you're doing this right as as that um as that pops up in your life number four is comfort and then looking at pursuit so don't be afraid of not being comfortable right when you're feeling like i'm comfortable and that's holding me back then you have to pursue things you have to you know look for adventure and and try not to fear adventure even and you can start really small and that'll really help nice uh five is blame and then the virtue for that is take ownership of everything everything in your life no matter what's happening to you find some level of ownership with that when i think when you can start to do that then you start to take control of the things that are going on in your life mm -hmm. when you feel like you're more in control then you can actually start to steer things a little bit better yeah uh, and then we got insecurity as number six and vulnerability was the counter i don't think i need to go too deep into that and the last one that we didn't really touch on was emotional eating and for that, I actually put emotional choosing. And to reference back to our episode with Michelle Seeger of The Joy Choice, uh, author of The Joy Choice, it really is, it's about making those, those choices that feel good to you. Oftentimes when you are emotionally eating, you're doing that out of um, a reaction. It's reactionary. Mm -hmm. And you don't actually feel good afterwards. No. So recognizing like, what feels good about this action what doesn't feel good about this action weigh those things and make choices that just feel better yeah awesome thank you yeah uh, my final notes for the episode is really just the the purpose of this isn't to think oh my goodness i have to now go down the list so I, riley had seven then kyle had seven i've got to fix 14 <laughs> things in my no, life no. the way that uh, i always approach this with some of these negative behaviors that have negative outcomes and then the positive the virtues is is it's a pick one yeah. what it, what it, what do you feel you could really work on that now is the time and what's been lacking um i w actually truly want to start bringing my patients through let's let's pick a virtue mm. yeah, there's if you really go through the human virtues there's like 30 that yeah. are of, of the most popular well-established it's yeah. like just pick one if, if yeah. it's patience then let's work on that. And I, I honestly want that to become part of my treatment plans yeah. as we look at what's one of the deadly sins that you can drop and what's one of the virtues you can add in. Yeah. So it's a pick one for me. So yeah, don't let so. this be overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. And, and the other thing too is like your virtues might be different than the, uh, your sins and virtues might be different than the ones that we've outlined today as well. Like go through and like try and figure out like, okay, what are my seven deadly sins? Mm -hmm. And like, what are the virtues that I can practice to help combat those when they pop up in my life? because everybody's unique in, in a good way. Um, embrace that uniqueness and most importantly, explore that uniqueness. There we go. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, this was fun. That was All right. fun. All right, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. We look forward to having you in the next episode of the Wellness Dojo Podcast. See you later. Bye. For additional support or to work with one of us one-on-one, -on -one, go to our website, www.wellnessdojo.ca. 
You can also find us on Instagram at Wellness Dojo YYC or on all other social media platforms searching The Wellness Dojo. We'll see you in the next episode.